the healthy spiritual diet. Are you eating healthy spiritually? Many of us, we try to live our lives as healthy as we possibly can, right? We have been told that exercise is good for us. And so what do we try to do? We try to exercise because again, we've been told that exercise is good for our heart. We have been told that it is good for our mental health. So we try to exercise as much as we possibly can. And we try to do this so that we can stay in good shape. Yeah, yeah. We, we try to do our very best to diligently exercise in order for us to have good health. The goal being that we want to live as long as we possibly can. So we do our very best to stay in good shape. The second thing that some of us will attempt to do in order for us to stay in good shape, in order for us to have good health, we will try to have a healthy diet. Yeah, all right. We have been told over the years that a healthy diet, it can help to protect us from chronic disease. Mm -hmm. Diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, hypertension. All right. And we have, of course, also been told that if we have a healthy diet, if we eat from a healthy diet, we will do a better job of maintaining our weight. Because again, that will help keep us in good shape. Yeah, yeah. When we have a healthy diet and, and when we are able to exercise as well, mm -hmm. we have been told by the experts that we will think better, mm -hmm. that we will feel better, and that we will move better. And again, we have been told that we can have or extend our lives. And that's the main goal. We want to live as long as we possibly can. Now, as I have said over the past couple of weeks, many of us have a, a great concern for our physical health. And I believe that to be very understandable. All of us should want to be in the best condition that we possibly can be in physically. It is in my opinion, something that we take with great seriousness. But again, as I said a couple of weeks ago, do we have such concern for our spiritual health? Again, I want to take a look here today at our spiritual health in my sermon this week. Yeah, we want to live as long as we possibly can physically but the question I ask today is, why don't we show this same concern spiritually? All right. Yeah. Do you want to live on spiritually after this physical passes away? Yeah. Do you want to extend your life spiritually after this world as we know it physically after it passes away. In order for us to continue to live on spiritually, I tell you today that we must be in good health spiritually. Yeah. All right. So again, I want to ask a couple of questions to all of you today. And I want you to have this in mind as we go throughout this sermon. And I want you to keep this in mind even after this sermon is over with today. Yeah. First question is this. Are you eating healthy spiritually? All right. In other words, I'm asking whether or not you have a healthy spiritual diet. Yeah. Yeah. Second question is this. Mm -hmm. Does what you eat spiritually make you feel better? All right. Does it make you think better? All right. Does it make you move better? Mm -hmm. These are the questions that I want you to think about as we go on this journey today in my message. And even after this message is over with today. Yeah, yeah. Now, on the thought of having a healthy spiritual diet, I want to first point out to all of you today that our world is like a big buffet. All right. Yeah. And our spirit is at this buffet. Mm -hmm. 
what I what I what I'm trying to convey here, what I want you to understand right off the bat here today is that there is much food in the world for our spirit to be able to eat for our spirit to be able to consume. Now, I understand right off the top, right off the bat here Mm -hmm. that this thought of the spirit being able to consume something of the spirit being able to eat something. I understand right off the bat that that some may think that this is a far fetched idea. All right. Come on. Come on. Far-fetched because many of us, we don't think of the spiritual all that often. All right. Far-fetched because, again, many of us don't think of ourselves in a spiritual light. All right. We don't see ourselves as spiritual beings. All we see is the physical. Mm-hmm. So right off the bat, some of us are thinking about food. Yeah. Because I'm talking about eating. But I'm speaking spiritually here this morning. Far-fetched again, because a spirit being able to eat anything just doesn't make all that much of sense to some of us today. Yet, as we can hunger in our bellies, Mm -hmm. as the stomach growls, as we can feel hunger in our stomach, Mm -hmm. I tell you that our spirit has a great desire to be filled. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that our spirit, your spirit today has a great desire to be satisfied. It has a hunger as well. That is something that I want you to know. That is something that I want you to understand today. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind you that all of your thoughts, Mm -hmm. all of your feelings, all of your actions, they are all born in your soul today. Now, there's a conclusion that I can draw up from that as well Mm -hmm. that I want you to consider. What I can conclude from our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions being born in our soul today is that all of our dreams, all of our desires, Mm -hmm. all of our goals, whatever they may be, they too are born in your soul. All right. All of your dreams... Mm -hmm. All of your desires, all of your goals, all of your passions. Mm -hmm. We think that they come from our brain, don't we? All right. All right. But they don't come from there. They're originating elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They're coming from your soul. They're coming from your spirit. Mm -hmm. We all have a hunger to fulfill every dream, to fulfill every desire that we have every goal we have. We hunger, we thirst to be able to accomplish all of those things that we have set for ourselves. And again, we think that we are doing this on a a physical level, but I want you to understand that this hunger, that this desire you have to be able to accomplish your goals, to be able to fulfill your dreams, that is a spiritual hunger as well. Yes, sir. So I believe that all of us, we simply desire to be happy, don't we? No, no. All of us have a great desire to be happy. Yes. yes. I want you to understand that that desire mm-hmm. comes from your spirit. Mm-hmm. What this means is that your spirit hungers to be happy. No, no. Yes. Your spirit, it hungers to be satisfied. No, no. Yes. Now, the problem that many of us face today is that we do not truly understand what can satisfy our soul. Mm -hmm. We don't understand what can can fulfill the the hunger of our soul. We think we know. We think we have some kind of idea as to what can satisfy our soul. All right. All right. But we don't truly know. Mm -hmm. We, We don't truly know. We many of us, we struggle today with trying to satisfy our soul. Many of us, we struggle today with trying to satisfy our spirit today Mm -hmm. because we simply don't know how or what it is that can satisfy the hunger of our soul. So as we go out trying to satisfy the hunger of our soul, we often find that our soul is still hungry. 
This means that, that again, trying to go out and satisfy the soul through worldly means mm -hmm. leaves the soul empty. That leaves us empty on the side. And many of us find that we aren't happy because we are unable to satisfy our soul. Now, for those of you that don't believe your soul can hunger for anything or can, can consume anything, mm -hmm. I want to share some points from scripture today to validate this thought. All right. All right. In the book of Psalms, you can just open up to Psalms. You can find a Psalm. You'll see that David, he often spoke of how his soul longed for the Lord, how his soul was thirsty for God. Mm -hmm. No matter what psalm you open up to, just, just go through the book of Psalms and you'll see that David would often say, my soul thirsts for you. Really? Or he would say that my soul longs for you. Mm -hmm. That means that David's soul had a strong hunger yeah. to be fulfilled, to be satisfied. And David knew that it was God mm -hmm. who could satisfy the hunger of his soul. Yeah. In the Gospels, mm -hmm. you see that Jesus, he often spoke to or of the hunger of the soul. In the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, we'll see that Jesus, he fed the 5,000. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that on the day after feeding the 5,000 with a few pieces of fish and five loaves of bread, we'll see that some of the same people, they sought the Lord. They sought Jesus. They were seeking Jesus to see him perform another miracle. They was trying to see if Jesus would feed them again. That's right. yeah. And so in the 35th verse of the sixth chapter of John's gospel, you will see that Jesus, he said to those who had came to them, came to him seeking to be uh, having their hunger fulfilled again by Jesus. He said to them, he who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me, Jesus said, he shall never thirst. All right. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus was not talking about providing them with physical food. All right. Jesus was not talking to them about providing them with a liquid beverage for them to drink. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that Jesus was talking about quenching their thirst, fulfilling their hunger spiritually. Yes, yes. You see, our spirit, I tell you today, it is living. Our spirit, I tell you today, it is breathing. Our spirit, I tell you today, is like an empty stomach. It goes through hunger pains. It wants to be fed. It wants to feel full. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your soul constantly seeks for its next meal. Yes, yes. It seeks to have its hunger satisfied. Mm -hmm. It seeks to be happy. So what is most important for us is that we are feeding our soul, that we are feeding our spirit the right kind of food. What is important for us today is that we are feeding our spirit the right kind of sustenance yeah. so that it can feel good, so that it can feel full, so that it can be satisfied so that it can be merry. Because again, as we saw in my sermon last week, we know that a merry heart does good like medicine, Solomon said, but a broken spirit dries the bone. A broken spirit, I tell you today, it suffers from a poor spiritual diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we eat from a healthy spiritual diet, mm -hmm. the bones, they wouldn't dry. Right. They wouldn't rot. Mm -hmm. So what should we or what should we not be feeding our soul today? Wow. What should or what should we not be feeding our soul today yeah. in order for us to have a healthy spiritual diet? Mm -hmm. I want to direct your attention to Matthew's gospel for a brief moment here today in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, where my key verse was. Mm -hmm. When you get there, you'll see that Jesus was in the wilderness and that Jesus had fasted in the wilderness. Scripture tells us for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. I believe that that all of you are very familiar with this passage mm -hmm. of Scripture. We are told here in the second verse that 
after Jesus had fasted in the wilderness for those 40 days and for those 40 nights, yes, yes. we are told that Jesus found himself being hungry. Now, try to imagine going without for 40 days and for 40 nights. Try to imagine how you would feel in your belly. All right. I can only imagine the kind of hunger pains that Jesus may have been going through. All right. To go this long without food. To go this long, I could only imagine that Jesus may have been hurting physically. I can only imagine that he may have been in some kind of pain. I can only imagine that he may have been physically exhausted. I can only imagine that he may have been physically weak as well. Now, something interesting happens here in this scripture. All right. Okay, so so I want you to keep in mind that Jesus may have been physically weak All right. here in this moment. Mm-hmm. We are told here in the third verse that somebody came to visit Jesus. And it wasn't just some some nobody. It wasn't just just anybody. All right. We are told in this scripture that it was the tempter. Wow. Said so the tempter, mm-hmm. the tempter being who? The devil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. The tempter came to Jesus. And I don't believe it was a coincidence at the the timing of when the tempter decided to come and pay Jesus a visit. Come on. Come on. He came to Jesus when Jesus was hungry and when Jesus was in a physically weakened state. Remember what, how, how Peter described the devil in, in his first letter in the fifth chapter of first Peter, Peter described the devil as a roaring lion seeking what it could destroy. Now, when lions, when, when they go on the hunt, Right. And specifically, when they go on the attack, mm-hmm. they wait for their, their prey. They search for a prey that is ultimately in a weakened state. Right. Yeah, yeah. So again, don't think for one second mm-hmm. that the devil just happened to arrive by coincidence because it wasn't coincidence. Mm-hmm. When, when, when the devil shows up in your life, mm-hmm. I want you to understand that it's not by coincidence. That's right. The devil thinks that you are weak when he arrives and he will show up when he believes that you are in a weakened state. And as I have said over the past couple of weeks, we live in a world with two intertwining domains, the physical and the spiritual. So while Jesus was in a physically weakened state, I suppose that the devil may have thought that his spirit must have been in a weakened state as well. Yeah, all right. Now, I don't believe that this thought is far-fetched mm-hmm. because we have seen the devil attack in this manner before in Scripture. Yeah. When, when, when the devil wanted to attack Job, he tried to get Job into as uh, weak of a, 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 a situation as he possibly could. Mm-hmm. He wanted Job to be physically, he wanted Job to be uh, in a weakened condition. So that Job in his heart could turn around and curse the Lord so that Job in his heart, meaning his spirit could turn away from God. The devil is always trying to attack your spirit. I said that for the past two weeks. That's what the devil was actually trying to do here with the Lord. That's what he was trying to do with Jesus. I want you to understand that this was a spiritual attack. This was a spiritual battle that the devil was now waging against Christ. It wasn't the only time that the devil actually tried to attack Jesus in that manner. Mm -hmm. He tried to do it on the cross as well. All right. So we'll see here in this fourth chapter and in that third verse, we'll see that in this weakened state, 
that the devil came and tempted Jesus. He said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, this may sound like it was a challenge that was physical in nature. But again, I tell you today that this was not a physical challenge by the devil. The devil had begun a spiritual battle and he was now attacking God. Because again, we say that Jesus is God in the flesh. Yes, it is. So this was a test of the heart of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And when again, I say the heart, I'm talking about the spirit. Uh-huh. Jesus was not in a weakened state spiritually. He says there in the fourth verse, He responds to the devil with a a saying that all of us are familiar with. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of who? From the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Now, many have quoted this scripture, but many don't fully understand what Jesus meant by this saying. So what does Jesus actually mean by this? First and foremost, Jesus's response was all about spiritual living. This wasn't a, 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 a response that dealt with physically living. This was all about spiritual because Jesus understood that, that the devil was trying to attack his heart, that the devil was trying to attack his spirit. If Jesus was solely speaking about physically living in the world, then this statement wouldn't make much sense. All right. Because all of us know that we need food in order in order to be able to make it another day, in order to be able to live. We know that our body can't go all that long without putting something into our bellies. So our body requires some sort of sustenance in order to be able to keep on living. Mm -hmm. Whatever our diet may be, we know that we have to put something in us in order to be able to live. If we don't, we know that we would die. We would die of starvation. Mm -hmm. So again, that statement has nothing to do with the physical. Now, our physical bodies may be able to live off of what the world provides. Mm -hmm. But I tell you today, the truth of the matter is that the world can provide nothing for your soul to be able to survive. There is no food that the world can, can provide your spirit that will help your soul be able to make it another day. Mm-hmm. Our soul, by the world, what the world can provide it, yeah. would be temporarily fed. In other words, it will be temporarily satisfied. Mm-hmm. All we will end up doing if we try to live off of what the world can provide the soul, all we end up doing is hungering again in our soul. We would do nothing but go back to being hungry because the soul would feel empty again. Yeah, yeah. Simply put, our soul requires more food than the world could ever provide it. Mm-hmm. Spiritually, we cannot live by bread. We cannot live by, in other words, the world. And Jesus tells us that our diet should consist of every word of God. Mm-hmm. Jesus tells us that every word of God is what our soul needs in order to be able to live. Do you see that there today? And when we try to spiritually live solely by the food of the world, Mm -hmm. I tell you today that the end results aren't good because that is not good for our health. It is not a good diet for our spiritual health. Now, I want to direct your attention here for just a moment to Mark's gospel. That's what we read responsively here today. Mm -hmm. I want to direct your attention to the gospel of Mark for this moment, because I want to show you the kind of person we become when our diet simply consists of the food that the world provides. Mm -hmm. In the gospel of Mark, there in the seventh chapter of Mark's gospel, we read about an occasion when Jesus was confronted by some religious leaders. Mm -hmm. From the first verse through the fifth verse, 
you see that those religious leaders, that they arrived to Jesus, they had an accusation against the disciples. They even had a judgment of the disciples as well. They judged that the disciples had defiled themselves because of what they had eaten and how they had ate. Mm -hmm. The disciples, they didn't wash their hands when they ate. And so the religious leaders considered that their hands were dirty and that the food that they had touched and that the food that they had put in their mouth Mm -hmm. was dirty Mm -hmm. and that they had defiled themselves, not physically, but on the inside. Mm -hmm. And again, on the inside, not physically, On the inside, I mean in the inner man. I mean spiritually here. So I want you to understand again here that this was not a physical battle. This was a, as I said last week, a spirit to spirit interaction. And we have some spirits accusing other spirits of now being defiled, of now being corrupted. So this was another spiritual battle where they were accusing the disciples, Jesus' closest followers, of being corrupt in their soul. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jesus, he understood very well that this was not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus, he responded to the religious leaders. And as we go throughout that passage of scripture, we'll see that Jesus also spoke to the people as well. We'll see in the 14th and in the 15th verse here in this passage of scripture that Jesus says to the people, he says, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him. Those are the things Jesus said that defile a man. We'll then see here in this passage of scripture that the disciples was confused, that they did not quite understand what Jesus meant by this. So they came to Jesus so that Jesus could further explain himself to them. And so we'll see that Jesus then explained to the disciples. He said in the 20th through the 23rd verse there, Jesus said, whatever enters a man from outside, meaning the world, cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. Said what comes out of a man that defiles a man for from within underline this part here. Mm -hmm. He says out of the heart of men. When he's talking about the heart there, he's talking again about the soul. He's talking about the spirit. He says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye. He said, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. He names all of these things there. Thoughts and actions, Jesus names there. Yeah. I mean, I would just draw a big circle around these verses here Mm -hmm. because a lot of us be wondering, well, what is sin? What are the sins? Mm -hmm. Just draw a line around it. Jesus tells you. He explains to you right there. And he tells you, he says there, he says, all these things come from within a defiled man. It comes from a, a corrupted spirit. A spirit that has been consuming an unhealthy diet. It has not been eating well. All All of those actions, all of those things that you see there. Mm -hmm. Now, all those characteristics that Jesus mentions there to the disciples, they come from someone, I want you to understand, that has a a corrupt spirit. When Jesus responded to the religious leaders early in that passage of scripture, there in the eighth verse, he told them that they laid aside the commandment of God for the tradition of men. So we could say that the bread that the religious leaders had been consuming in their heart, in their spirit, were those traditions of men. That was their bread. That was what their spirit was consuming. And we can think of that bread as worldly teachings. Instead of, of, of 
living by the word of God. They were living by the word of men. They were living by the bread of men. Now we will see that this was certainly true throughout the rest of the gospels, because we know that the religious leaders actions were often very contentious, very contentious with Jesus. They were filled with anger against Jesus. They hated Jesus. So they were often contentious. They was often filled with anger, hatred, and most importantly, they were often filled with selfish ambitions. Now, I don't use those words by chance. I use those words purposely to describe those religious leaders. Because elsewhere in the Bible, we'll see that in his letter to the Galatians, Paul used these characteristics to describe works of the flesh. Paul wrote in the fifth chapter of Galatians, starting at the 19th verse, and you have seen me, you have heard me reference this scripture before. Paul wrote that some of the works of the flesh included hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies. Again, these characteristics describe those who consume, they eat from an unhealthy spiritual diet because that is what comes out of their spirit. Yeah. All right. They were in poor spiritual health, mm-hmm. the religious leaders were, because they were eating from an unhealthy spiritual diet. Oh, yeah. Their poor spiritual diet actually led those religious leaders mm-hmm to be the ones that were defiling themselves Mm -hmm. and not the disciples. They were concerned about the wrong thing. The disciples learning from Jesus were concerned about the spiritual. So they didn't care anymore about, about those worldly traditions all that much. And every thought, every feeling, every action is born from what our spirit has consumed. Mm -hmm. So I ask the question to all of you today, are you defiled in your spirit because of what you have been eating spiritually? Have you been eating from an unhealthy spiritual diet? Mm -hmm. Now let us all consider today that all of us have been fed from some of the same bread. All of us have have been eating some of the same stuff as those religious leaders have been eating. Mm -hmm. We have all been raised the same way. To, to have ambitions, to, to set goals, to, to have great gains. Mm-hmm. And, and many of us, because we don't turn to eat from, from what the Lord serves at his buffet, and because all we eat from is, is the world's buffet, many of us have become consumed with those ambitions, mm-hmm. with the goals and the traditions that man has set. And so we begin to live by Instead of the word of God, we live by the word of men. And that is what consumes us in our soul. That is what then begins to fill our mind, our thoughts. That is what begins to fill our our emotions. That is what begins to drive us in our actions. And many of our actions become just like those religious leaders' actions. All right filled with nothing but selfish ambition, filled with nothing but jealousies, Mm -hmm. covetousness, contentions, and hate. So we should want to eat better, right? We should want to eat from a a better diet for our soul so that our soul is not filled with that kind of mess. (laughs) So the question that some of us may ask is, well, what is the healthy spiritual diet that we should be eating for our soul? Mm -hmm. Now, let us turn our attention back to the key verse again one more time here. Because Jesus gives us the answer that we seek. Mm -hmm. And he tells us again that man cannot live by bread alone. Key part here, he says, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The answer is clear. Yeah, yeah. The answer is clear as to what our diet should be, what we should be eating spiritually. I don't know. The answer is very clear. Jesus tells us 
that we should be eating from every word of God. Yeah. Yes, sir. That should be our diet. Mm -hmm. The word of God. Right That's simple. The word of God. Yeah, yeah. Now, now this is actually a quote from the eighth chapter of Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. where Moses, he recalled what the Lord had done for the children of Israel when they were out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord had provided them with manna, mm -hmm. manna was considered to be the bread of heaven. Mm -hmm. And there was a lesson that the children of Israel learned from being in the wilderness and from receiving that manna. Mm -hmm. And in that lesson, Moses, he began to teach to them. He began to tell them that they learned that they could not make it on their own. They could not do it. Mm -hmm. The only way that they were able to make it was from what God had been providing them. Yeah, yeah. So the lesson that they learned was that they could not make it on their own. Mm -hmm. They could not live by bread alone, <laughs> but by the bread that God had provided to them. Mm -hmm. They learned that they had to trust in the Lord's providence. Yeah. They learned that they had to depend on the Lord's providence as well. We must learn that same lesson as well today. What God has given to your soul, I tell you today that it and it alone is what can, can sustain you. Wow. Yeah. And what God has given to all of us to be able to sustain us is his word. Yeah. And we are told in the first chapter of Judge's gospel that the word was God. Yeah. The word is his only begotten son, yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus, which was given to the world out of God's love for us. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to have a healthy spiritual diet today, I tell you that you should be eating up, that you should be consuming in your soul every lesson, yeah. every word that Jesus taught, Every word that Jesus preached, every word that Jesus commanded us to live by, that is what should be on your plate. Yes, sir. That is what you should be eating spiritually. That should consume us. We should crave it. That is what our spirit actually craves. Because the spirit knows what can make it happen. The spirit came from God. All the spirit wants is, is to be with God again. Yes, sir. But too many of us, we starve our spirit of that because we keep it away from God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the spirit desires yeah. for us to dive into the food that God has for us. Mm -hmm. In his letter, James wrote that we should not just be hearers of the word, mm -hmm. but that we should be doers of the word. James, he would go on to say that he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, liberty coming from Jesus, the law of liberty being Jesus, the law of liberty being the word of God. James says that he who looks into it and he who continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one, James said, will be blessed in what he does. Oh, yeah. Blessed, meaning spiritually happy. Your soul wants to be spiritually happy. That's what I just said to you. Peter wrote, he said that as newborn babes, Peter said, desire the pure milk of the word. He said again, as newborn babes, desire desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. The spirit wants that, that milk from the Lord. The world doesn't have that kind of milk. All right. That's why so many souls are not growing today right. because they're constantly just eating from and drinking from the world mm -hmm. instead of turning to the buffet that is the word of God. I, I remember when I was little, and we were told all kind of things that could help our health. Mm -hmm. Said that if you eat carrots, you have good eyesight. Mm -hmm. Said that if you eat spinach, you'll be strong like Popeye. 
I tell you today that I believe that, that all of us can have some great benefits if we simply changed our spiritual diet to one that is healthy for our spirit today. Those benefits, I tell you, will cause you to grow in your spirit. Those benefits, I tell you today, will put you in a better place spiritually. What I mean by this is that you're going to become healthy spiritually. Yeah. Your thoughts are going to become better. They're going to be more pure. Mm-hmm. Not only will your thoughts be better, but you're, you're going to feel better. Your, your feelings, your emotions are going to become better. They're going to be more pure. Yeah. Therefore, your actions, mm-hmm. your actions are going to be better. Your actions are going to be pure. Mm-hmm. I tell you today that you will no longer have that empty feeling on the inside if you change your spiritual diet to one that is healthy, no. your spirit is no longer going to, to, to is no longer going to feel unsatisfied. No. Your spirit is no longer going to to be empty. So you will not feel empty on the inside if you simply have a seat at the buffet of the Word of God, and if you simply dine on His Word. I tell you today that the word of God will fill up the empty hunger of your spirit. I tell you today, you are going to be blessed. I tell you today that you are going to be spiritually satisfied. All of these things, all of these benefits, I tell you today, they will occur. They will happen if you simply eat from the word of God. The word of God, I tell you today, that it will sustain. It will sustain you not only today, but it will sustain you tomorrow as well. Not only will it sustain you tomorrow, but it will sustain you eternally. You will never go hungry again if you eat from the word of God. So I encourage everybody. I encourage all of you today. I know that y'all are eating from the word of God, but I have viewers. I have listeners as well. I encourage everybody to sit down at the Lord's buffet. Eat from the word of God. Consume every last bit of it. And I tell you today that you are going to be in the best shape of your life. Eating a healthy spiritual diet that the Lord provides will cause you to be much better. Amen. 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 Amen.